we really own the stocks we buy, and if not, who owns them? This is a very important piece of information to understand in particular as we are moving into an uncertain future when it is unclear if and how a potential monetary reset may play out. Will it be a power outage, a cyber pandemic, an act of war? We don't know, but what we do know is that everything that is held in an electronic form might not be as safe as we think it is. The numbers in your bank account can just disappear. Your crypto can be delisted, collapse, or be stolen, or you forget your password or your wallet corrupts. But how about stocks that you have bought via an online broker or your bank? They should be safe, right? Not really, unfortunately. To answer this, we have to go back for a minute to the 60s and early 70s. At that time, the settlement of all stocks was still handled by sending paper stock certificates around by couriers. But the volume of traded stocks had grown so much that it became seemingly impossible to handle all the paperwork associated with exchanging paper share certificates between all the trading houses and their clients. To address this issue, it was decided that share certificates should be held by a central custodian on behalf of the trading firms, brokerages, and their clients so that there is no longer a constant exchange of the original share certificates. But instead, the custodian would hold the share certificates on behalf of all the trading counterparties. This led the New York Stock Exchange to establish the Central Certificate Service, CCS, in 1968. Later in 1973, the Depository Trust Company, DTC, was additionally formed. In 1996, Seed & Company was founded to process the transfers of stock certificates on behalf of the DTC. As of the latest reporting by the DTC, the depository held more than 1.3 million securities, valued at 54.2 trillion US dollars. The holding company of the DTC is called the Depository Trust and Clearing Company, DTCC. Through its subsidiaries like the DTC, it clears the vast majority of all securities and transactions in the United States, with a total value of 2.15 quadrillion US dollars, making it the world's largest financial value processor. Its depository is responsible for the custody and asset servicing of securities issued by 170 countries and territories, with a total value of 63 trillion US dollars. It can be said that the DTCC owns pretty much all the financial securities in existence, including all stocks, bonds, and fixed income assets, treasuries, and mortgage-backed securities. When you buy stocks or any other financial securities online, then you are only the beneficial owner. So you are entitled to the benefit of contract. All financial instruments you purchase make you the beneficial owner, not the registered owner. But the true owner is the registered owner, only the registered owner holds the financial security in their name. The registered owner's name is appearing on the paper certificate. Therefore, the registered owner possess ultimately the full ownership and control of the financial security. The registered owner of the financial security has granted you as the buyer of securities the right to benefit from them. But they may have the right to revoke or refuse you such rights or may no longer be able to grant you such due to some unforeseen event. It is similar to acquiring real estate. If you buy a house without a mortgage and it's all done correctly, then you will be the registered owner in the books for that property. In case you have a mortgage, then most likely the bank will be the registered owner and you are the beneficial owner until the mortgage is fully repaid. Therefore, the bank has the right to take that property from you under certain conditions. You are just the beneficiary of contract, so you have the control of the property and can use it but the bank owns it and can revoke you such rights. Therefore, in conclusion, if you hold financial securities for wealth protection, then you must make sure that you are the registered holder of the actual paper certificates. Because if you don't, then in case of a true collapse of our financial system, your holdings most likely will be wiped out. In case of a major cyber attack or catastrophic event that could bring down the entire financial system, like certain people warned about, then the DTCC and its surrounding settlement processes might be affected as well and thus erasing or corrupting all the electronically held ownership information on who owns which shares, leaving only those as the true owners who hold the paper share certificates in their own name. So it is not BlackRock or Vanguard, after all, who own everything. The true owner, the DTCC, is as usual in the shadows and known only by a handful few. Hope this was helpful to you. Thanks for watching and all the very best.